professional in class, I want you to take turns asking and Hi, are you ready to describe imaginary situations? You will learn to do so after the audio program and our explanation. Unreal conditional sentences with if clauses. Unreal conditional sentences describe imaginary situations with simple past forms and consequences in the present. What would you do if you found $750,000? If I found $750,000, I would go straight to the mall. If I found $750,000, I'd go straight to the mall. If I found $750,000, I could buy lots of nice clothes and jewelry. If I found $750,000, I might go to the police. If I found $750,000, I wouldn't return it so fast. This is what Unreal Conditional is about. Unreal Conditional describes imaginary situations. Let's begin with the structure of it. An unreal conditional is made out of two clauses, the if clause and the main clause. Let's work first on the if clause. This one is formed with if plus a past simple verb. Let's move on to the main clause. In this part, we may use would, could, or might plus verb in simple present. We want you to pay attention to the following. Clauses may change position. If clause may be first or vice versa, but you need to watch your punctuation. The use of comma is mandatory when the if clause is at the beginning. Read the following example and notice the use of a comma. But when the if clause is at the end of the sentence, we do not use a comma. Finally, we have some examples for you. If she had a lot of money, she could buy a new apartment. They would be happy if they won the lottery. If he were president, he might reduce taxes. Now that you have learned about Unreal Conditional in class, I want you to take turns asking and answering questions. What would you do if you saw a burglar in your home? If you found a diamond ring, if your friend wanted to marry someone you didn't trust, type your answers as well in a discussion box. Okay, so as you can see, today we're going to be looking and continuing again with the conditionals. Maria, are there any questions about the conditionals? No, teacher. No, it was okay from yesterday. Maria, it was okay yesterday? It was, it was clear? Me. Excuse me. Hi. Hi. Okay. <laughs> I didn't hear you. Okay. I didn't listen to you. Uh, no problem. I asked if yesterday's class, the conditional, it's clear if it was okay. Yeah. It's yeah. clear. It's clear? Yes. So if you remember from yesterday, we're going to just take a look one more time at the video to make sure that it's clear. Okay. The idea of it. And then real. Yeah. Okay. So the grammar structure is always with the if part. We're going to use the. <clears throat> Sorry, we're going to. Simple use the past. Simple. Yeah, the simple past, right? Yeah. But then in. The main clause, we're going to use a modal verb like would, could, and then the verb. Right. That's right. And then the in, in present. present tense. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of different questions like, you know, if you won a million dollars, what would you do? What would you do if you won a million dollars? Okay. So these are the ways that we can make them. We can imagine any situation, really. Okay. So before we get into it and we start describing all of the different events and the different things, okay, uh, we want to just take a moment and go and review with our partners a little bit about our day, okay? Uh, as an example, 
So then we're going to use a little bit of conditionals to make it, okay? Um, as an example, I can say, Henry, how was your day today? What did you do? Uh, today I did, I, I start a job uh, this Monday, this Monday. So uh, today I was working. Okay. Monday. Now, uh, yeah. good. Look, that's good, Henry. Let me give you the, the other example for everybody to see. Now that Henry gave me information, I'm going to ask a conditional question, a conditional question. Henry, what would you have done or what would you do if you didn't have a job? If I didn't have a job, I maybe stay at home all the time. Almost, Henry, almost very good. I know I stay at home. I, you're missing uh, the, the simple passive. No, no, the model, the model. I, I would stay home yeah. Yeah, all the day. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's why we want to practice. So we're yeah. going to talk to our partners like we have about the days, the routine, the activities. But now we're going to ask conditional questions. Anything. For example, Francisco, what did you have for lunch? Uh, my lunch uh, was... Uh, spaghettis. Uh, did you prepare the spaghetti? Yes. Ah, uh, what would you have eaten if you didn't prepare the spaghettis? Repeat me a question, please. What would you have eat, eaten if you didn't prepare the spaghettis? Okay, um, perhaps hamburger. <laughs> but make the sentence. Don't give me an answer. Make a sentence. Perhaps I eat in hamburger. No. No. I will. That's right. Excellent, Kathy. That's the motto. Sorry. Re repeat me, please. I uh, or may or maybe I I would eat a hamburger. No, no. Uh, okay, I, I would eat. Yes, I, I would eat. eat. Mm -hmm. Hamburger. Okay. 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 You can have. Okay. Also, if it's in the past, we're going to use I would have. Remember, I would have eaten Eating. hamburger. Okay. So that's the difference. So if you're talking about in general, uh, if I didn't have spaghetti, I would eat hamburgers. If you're talking about specific in the past, uh, I would have eaten hamburgers. But it's okay, both of them. The, the important today is that we begin using the complete sentence, not, not the basic answers, like in basic one, two, and three, or in pre-intermediate. No, 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 we are intermediate three. So no more uh, hamburger okay, no problem, I, no, now, complete answers, right? So as an example, let's, one more example, or it's okay? One more, please. Ah, okay, one more, one more, okay. So I'm going to ask, uh, for example, Byron, Byron, how was your day? What did you do today? Uh, good evening. Well, my day was a little bit tired, making some changes for my team and some reports about the lateness they have today from the schedule that they have to go in and go out from their chief. Okay. Okay. Uh, Byron, if you didn't have any changes, uh, what would you have done today? Well, if I didn't have any changes with that, I could make some reinforcement with those guys about the feedback they need to receive from the calls that they are not working as they should work. Exactly, that's the idea. That's the complete answer. No, uh, I, I, no changes. No, I make changes. No, no. If I didn't have that, I would. No, that's a complete answer. That's what we're going to practice with our partners. Okay. 
So we're going to practice it. I think maybe looking at the class, maybe it's a good idea. We watch the video for conditional sentences one more time to remember a little bit the grammar structure so that we can remember how, how is the correct form and what do we do, okay? Let's take a look. This is the 5.3, the conditional sentences. Let's watch a little bit and have some more examples before we practice. Your conditional is made out of two clauses. $150,000. If I found $750,000, I, I found $750,000, I could buy lots. Okay, so we're going to see that in just a second. Here, remember, uh, what would you do if, and these are imaginary situations, right? You can talk about your day, and you could talk about tomorrow. Uh, what is going to happen tomorrow? Oh, I have a meeting. I have to go to the doctor. Ah, uh, what would you do if you didn't have a meeting? What would you do if you, your, your mother were a doctor or whatever, right? That's the idea. Here we're going to see the structures. Lots of nice clothes and jewelry. If I found $750,000, I might go to the police. If I found $750,000, I wouldn't return it so fast. This is what Unreal Conditional is about. Unreal Conditional describes imaginary situations. Let's begin with the structure of it. An unreal conditional is made out of two clauses, the if clause and the main clause. Let's work first on the if clause. This one is formed with if plus a past simple verb. Let's move on to the main clause. In this part, we may use would, could, or might plus verb in simple present. We want you to pay attention to the following. Clauses may change position. If clause may be first or vice versa, but you need to watch your punctuation. The use of comma is mandatory when the if clause is at the beginning. Read the following example and notice the use of a comma. But when the if clause is at the end of the sentence, we do not use a comma. Finally, we have some examples for you. If she had a lot of money, she could buy a new apartment. They would be happy if they won the lottery. If he were president, he might reduce taxes. Now that you have learned about Unreal Conditional in class, I want you to take turns asking and answering questions. What would you do if you saw a burglar in your home? If you found a diamond ring, if your friend wanted to marry someone you didn't trust, type your answers as well in our discussion box. Okay, so we're going to practice it. Like I said, we're going to practice making sentences and making the questions. Okay, that's the first part. We're going to first practice making sentences and questions. I can go with my partner. Imagine Henry is my partner. Hi, Henry. How was your day? Ah. If I didn't have, if I didn't need the money, I wouldn't go to work because it's a lot of, you know, and then you can invent. Ah, if, if I had a vacation days, if I had a, a friend that was a doctor, I asked for a permission, whatever. Okay. You can create the sentences as also you can make the questions to your partners. Now is better? Yeah. Okay, let's try. We're going to have a few minutes. It takes a little bit of time. So let's take some time and here with our partners. So, sorry, teacher. How many questions uh, we, uh, we do? Ah, it, good. It's not a matter of question. It's, it's for time today. Today, okay. yeah, is to con to have a normal conversation. Exactly. So the first partner is going to speak five minutes. Five minutes. You ask your partner, oh, and what happened, and what day, and then in five minutes, 
you change. And then the other partner asks you, Francisco, how was your day? What happened? How is your family? Oh, if you didn't have a daughter, if you had a son, how would you feel? Ah, oh, if I had a daughter, if I had a dog, ah, oh, if I didn't have Netflix, I would, whatever. We have a, a normal conversation. Okay. So five minutes and then the other partner, five minutes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's practice. Hi, are you ready to describe imaginary situations? You will learn to do so after the audio program on our explanation. Unreal conditional sentences with if clauses. Unreal conditional sentences describe imaginary situations with simple past forms and consequences in the present. What would you do if you found $750,000? If I found $750,000, I would go straight to the mall. If I found $750,000, I'd go straight to the mall. If I found $750,000, I could buy lots of nice clothes and jewelry. If I found $750,000, I might go to the police. If I found $750,000, I wouldn't return it so fast. This is what Unreal Conditional is about. Unreal Conditional describes imaginary situations. Let's begin with the structure of it. An Unreal Conditional is made out of two clauses, the if clause and the main clause. Let's work first on the if clause. This one is formed with if plus a past simple verb. Let's move on to the main clause. In this part, we may use would, could, or might plus verb in simple present. We want you to pay attention to the following. Clauses may change position. If clause may be first or vice versa, but you need to watch your punctuation. The use of comma is mandatory when the if clause is at the beginning Read the following example and notice the use of a comma. But when the if clause is at the end of the sentence, we do not use a comma. Finally, we have some examples for you. If she had a lot of money, she could buy a new apartment. They would be happy if they won the lottery. If he were president, he might reduce taxes. Now that you have learned about Unreal Conditional in class, I want you to take turns asking and answering questions. What would you do if you saw a burglar in your home? If you found a diamond ring? If your friend wanted to marry someone you didn't trust? Type your answers as well in our discussion box. Now you answer all of these questions, exercise 5.4. Then the next one is learning how to describe events. For this, we're going to learn antonyms. Antonyms means the opposite. To know about antonyms and synonyms help increase your vocabulary, take a look at the following antonyms and find its opposite. Listen carefully and repeat. Accept. Admit, agree, borrow, deny, disagree, dislike, divorce, enjoy, find, forget, lend, lose, marry, refuse, remember, save. Spend. 
Now that you have listened to that pronunciation, make a chart on your notebook and complete it. Stay to see what we want you to do next. We want you to choose four pairs of opposites. Write sentences using each pair. And finally, we're going to talk about actions in the past. Are you ready to give opinions and suggestions about actions in the past? Join us and learn how to do it. Past modals. Use would have or should have plus past participle to give opinions or suggestions about actions in the past. What should I have done? You should have told them about it. You shouldn't have hidden it. What would you have done? I would have called him. I wouldn't have sent him an email. When and how do we use past models? We use past models to give opinions and suggestions about actions that already happened. To give opinions, we use would have plus past participle. And to give suggestions, we use should have plus past participle. But in both cases, our opinion or suggestion is too late. Remember for statements, we must use subject plus would have or should have plus past participle plus the rest of the sentence. For questions, we add WH question word plus would or should plus subject plus have plus past participle and the question mark. Let's read these situations. It is your task to come up with suggestions. Remember, you may use would or wouldn't have or should or shouldn't have. Type your answers in our discussion box. Number one, your teacher borrowed your favorite book and spilled coffee all over it. Number two, you saw a classmate cheating on an exam. Mm -hmm. One more time, the antonyms and then the past models. To know about antonyms and synonyms help increase your vocabulary, take a look at the following antonyms and find its opposite. Listen carefully and repeat. Accept, admit, agree, borrow, deny, disagree, dislike, divorce, enjoy, find, forget, lend, lose, marry, refuse, remember, save, spend. Now that you have listened to that pronunciation, make a chart on your notebook and complete it. Stay to see what we want you to do next. We want you to choose four pairs of opposites. Write sentences using each pair. Hi. I found 750,000 jewelry. If I dollars, I wouldn't return it so fast. This is what Unreal Conditional is about. Unreal Conditional describes imaginary situations. Let's begin with the structure of it. An Unreal Conditional is made out of two clauses, the if clause and the main clause. Let's work first on the if clause. This one is formed with if plus a past simple verb. Let's move on to the main clause. In this part, we may use would, could, or might plus verb in simple present. We want you to pay attention to the following. Clauses may change position. If clause may be first or vice versa. 
but you need to watch your punctuation. The use of comma is mandatory when the if clause is at the beginning. Read the following example and notice the use of a comma. But when the if clause is at the end of the sentence, we do not use a comma. Finally, we have some examples for you. If she had a lot of money, she could buy a new apartment. They would be happy. Okay. So how did you guys feel? Is better? You feel more comfortable? Yes. Yes. Too better. Yes. Okay, good. Good. It's only is practice. Only is practice to understand how to use it. Here we have some examples that we are going to do together. This is from 5.4. Let's look at it. Okay. Let's have different options. Uh Let's see. Maria, you're going to have okay. one A. Elsie, okay. one B. Henry, two A. Henry, two B. Francisco, three A. Ever, three B. Byron, four A. Ana Pineda, four B. Okay. Okay. That way, everybody has an opportunity. Okay. Okay. Yes. If you have three months to travel, where would you go? Okay. It's the first. The first one. Okay. All right. If you had. Good. Let's go with number two. Letter B. Sorry. Number one, letter B. Mm -hmm. um, it's the second option. Oh, that's easy. I could fly to Antarctica. I've always wanted to go there. Okay, good. Number two. Oh, number two, what happened? <laughs> number two. Okay, okay, there you go. Good. Uh, uh, if your doctor, this is the. Yes, correct. Two A. If your doctor. If your doctor. Get more. Uh, uh, if your doctor told you. Get more exercise. Which sport would you choose? Okay. The one. Okay, no problem. Good. Uh, to be? I'm not sure, but I might go jogging more two or three times a week. Okay. Number three. Sorry, I, I couldn't hear you. Can can you repeat number three? Me. That three A. Or Anna. Three A. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the card is what would you do? What would you do if your car broke down? Okay. Now three B. Uh, I think it's the second option. If I couldn't afford to fix it, I will have to walk everywhere. Okay. Four A. It's me. Would you break into your house if you lock yourself out? Is the option two. Okay. 
Good. Only the pronunciation locked. With locked. T. Locked. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. And for B? If I didn't have enough key, another key, I could ask a neighbor for help. Help. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at how we did. Oh, excellent job, guys. Now we understand how to use the conditionals. Oh. Those are the correct ways. All of those are correct. Good job. Very good job. So make sure to complete it also in your platform, okay? Now we're going to learn antonyms. Do you remember what are antonyms? Yes. So, so. The opposite. The opposite, yes. Exactly. They're opposites, right? Today we're going to learn the vocabulary or antonyms for describing events. So we're going to learn vocabulary for describing events, but we're going to learn antonyms for describing events. Let's watch the video. To know about antonyms and synonyms help increase your vocabulary, take a look at the following antonyms and find its opposite. Opposite. Listen carefully and repeat. Accept. Accept. Admit. Accept. Admit. Agree. Admit. Borrow. Deny. Disagree. Dislike. Divorce. Enjoy. Find. Forget. Lend. Lose. Marry, refuse, remember, save, spend. Now that you have listened to that pronunciation, make a chart on your notebook and complete it. Stay to see what we want you to do next. Okay, first, okay. Are there any words that you need me to pronounce again? Are there any words that you're not clear how they pronounce? Uh, Henry, then is deny. Correct, is deny. 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 Mm -hmm. um, uh, I forget what mean deny. Oh, don't worry. You're going to find with your partner. That's that's okay. going to be the activity to find the answer. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's the opposite. Uh -huh. Okay. It's the opposite to deny to admit. Okay. Ah, very good, Maria. Good. Did you hear, Henry? Yeah, I hear. Excellent. Good. It's like agree and disagree. And Correct. Divorce, marry. Correct. Any okay. other words for pronunciation? No. Okay, perfect. So you're going to do exactly like the activity. You and your partners want to find the opposites and put them together. For example, accept and refuse. These are the opposites. You want to find the opposites of the other words. Okay. And when you find the opposites here in the discussion box, you put your answers. For example, you're going to write, ah, accept, refuse. Uh, as we mentioned, the other example, admit, Deny. Right. If we understand it, you have the correct ones. Okay. Okay. No problem. Let's see. All right. Let's try to make some groups. Don't worry, Javier. I see. I saw the message. Okay.
Are you ready to give opinions and suggestions about actions in the past? Join us and learn how to do it. Past modals. Use would have or should have plus past participle to give opinions or suggestions about actions in the past. What should I have done? You should have told them about it. You shouldn't have hidden it. What would you have done? I would have called him. I wouldn't have sent him an email. When and how do we use past models? We use past models to give opinions and suggestions about actions that already happened. To give opinions, we use would have plus past participle. And to give suggestions, we use should have plus past participle. But in both cases, our opinion or suggestion is too late. Remember for statements, we must use subject plus would have or should have plus past participle plus the rest of the sentence. For questions, we add WH question word plus would or should plus subject plus have plus past participle and the question mark. Let's read these situations. It is your task to come up with suggestions. Remember, you may use would or wouldn't have or should or shouldn't have. Type your answers in our discussion box. Number one. Your teacher borrowed your favorite book and spilled coffee all over it. Number two. You saw a classmate cheating on an exam. Len. Okay, let's see what you got with your partners. What were those antonyms? Here we have accept, refuse, admit, deny, agree, disagree, disagree. Agree. Excellent. Borrow, lend, lend, lend. Good. Remember the final sound. Borrow, lend is not the same. D. Sorry, Len. Ana Pinada, what was the question? Yes. Borrow and lend are not the same. No, they are opposites. What is lend? Uh, when you give, uh, for example, when you give me money mm -hmm. and borrow, borrow, I give you money. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if you want to buy a house, uh -huh. you, you don't lend the money to Banco Agricola. Um, Banco Agricola lends the money to you. You yes. borrow the money. So borrow is free and lend is ah, okay. have a cost. No, no, like no. Oh, no, 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 give me no, 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 or Custa Clown or Scotia Bank or whatever, you ask for money. If you yes. ask for, you borrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. The bank does not ask you for money. The bank gives you the money. Give you. So the bank <laughs> lends you the money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ana Pineda, it's okay? Okay. No, you, you are confused, Ana? Yes. Uh, I, I, to I, I understand that one asks for money and the, and the other one gives the money. Correct. Yes. When you ask, oh, uh -huh. when, for example, when I ask, it's lend. When they give, when the people gave me, give me, it's borrow. Uh, it's like that in receiver. Yes, it's like give and receive. So, for example, my phone, do you want to use my phone? Is borrow or lend? 
I want to use it. I lend you. No. I, I lend it. You borrow. Borrow. Yes. Ah, okay. Borrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Borrow is pedir. Borrow is when you ask for. Mm -hmm. Ask for. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. A little confused. <laughs> A little. It's, it's because the two questions are correct. I can ask Henry, Henry, can I borrow your phone? Or I can say, Henry, can you lend me your phone? Your phone. Okay. The Bye. question is correct, but the difference is the action. If I receive, I borrow. If I give or someone lend. gives, they lend. Mm -hmm. So receive, borrow, give, lend. Okay, okay. So... Okay. What about huh? the next one? Uh, we have dislike. Enjoy. 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 Good. Divorce. Mary. 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 Excellent. Find. Lose. 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 Good. Forget. Remember. 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 Save, spend, spend, spend. spend. Excellent. Any questions for the other vocabulary? Borrow. I uh, know. I have a question. Yes. <laughs> yes. Is like is more is more like the opposite of like. Which one? Uh, dislike is more the opposite of like. Correct. Dislike and like are opposites. Yes. Yeah, like and dislike. Like agree and disagree, but ah. Correct. Like agree and disagree. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Like possible and impossible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any other, any other questions? Okay. Good. Now we're going to go into our last video of the lessons. The last video is talking about actions in the past. These are for past models. So today we learned, or yesterday we learned about models. Could, should, would. At the beginning of the class, I was explaining to Francisco how to make the model in the past. Francisco, do you remember what is the word we use for the past? I will, I will eat it. Almost. You are missing the word for the past. Um, I don't remember. Did you? No problem. <laughs> no problem. Is would have the have would have gives yes. the past have. tense. Ah, uh, in the past, I would have gone to the movie. I would have seen the Fast and Furious. I would have eaten pupus this have is the past tense in this moment we're going to watch the video to understand like more teacher yes have, have, like auxiliar in the present perfect correct and, yes exactly is would have plus the verb in past participle okay okay let's watch the video to get a better idea are you ready to give opinions and suggestions about actions in the past? Join us and learn how to do it. Past modals. Use would have or should have plus past participle to give opinions or suggestions about actions in the past. What should I have done? You should have told them about it. You shouldn't have hidden it. What would you have done? I would have called him. I wouldn't have sent him an email. When and how do we use past models? We use past models to give opinions and suggestions about actions that already happened. To give opinions, we use would have plus past participle. And to give suggestions, we use should have plus past participle. But in both cases, our opinion or suggestion is too late. Remember for statements, we must use subject plus would have or should have plus past participle plus the rest of the sentence. 
For questions, we add WH question word plus word or should plus subject plus have plus past participle and the question mark. Let's read these situations. It is your task to come up with suggestions. Remember, you may use would or wouldn't have or should or shouldn't have. Type your answers in our discussion box. Number one. Your teacher borrowed your favorite book and spilled coffee all over it. Number two. You saw a classmate cheating on an exam. Okay. Let's take a look. The important is how we make it. First, to give suggestions, we use should have and the past participle. This is your opinion. This is your suggestion in the past, but not the person can change the actions. Only you are thinking about your opinion or suggestions in the past. This is should have, okay? Then also we have, sorry, Where's the other one? Uh, here's would have. Would have is I make this decision. I do this. I would have, uh, I would have gone to the beach. This is what I do. Should have is my opinion for you. You should have gone to the beach. Okay. So in order to make both, we have the subject, I, you, he, she, whatever the subject, would have or should have. Remember, would have is do and should have is recommend. Would have, do. Should have, recommend. And then the past participle. <coughs> okay. Now to make the questions, we use the WH and the same. Mm -hmm. I ask for recommendation or decision. If it's a decision, what would I say? Ah, Anna, what would you do in this situation? Or what would you have done in this situation? But if I ask for opinion, what should? What should I do? What should I try? Okay, this is your opinion. This, that's going to be the difference. So now with our partners, we're going to practice a little bit. Okay, I put one more time so that it's clear. How do we make the sentence? Is you, I would have, I could. I could have, or, or you are talking to your partner. Ah, my partner, you should have, is I give my opinion, right? And then to make the questions, we can say, hey, partner, what would you have done if no pandemic? Ah, eh, what, what should I have done eh, with my children? Or what should I have, I have said to my boss? Okay, so we're going to think about last year. This is how we use it to not get confused. We're thinking about last year and you are telling your partner, oh, last year I had an accident. Oh no, and my partner says, you should have called the police. You, I would have uh, uh, called my, uh, my friends, the different ideas. It's okay the difference would have and should have? Yeah. Okay, remember, what is the key? Would have plus, pars plus past participle. Should have plus past participle. Okay, before we begin, before we begin in the chat, write two questions so I can check if you understand correctly. Write two questions in the chat to see if you are making or you are understanding correctly the past models.
Go ahead. Any questions about last year or uh, before? Mm -hmm. What would you have done if you lost your wallet? Correct, Alex. Mm -hmm. Correct, ever, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, sorry. Okay, Maria. But remember, Maria, no sentence. Make the question you are going no to questions. ask your partner. Okay. Uh -huh, because you're going to ask your partner questions. Oh, uh, Alex, uh, ever, ever, uh, I, I'm sorry, I see uh, there's a small mistake, is what would you have done if you had lost your wallet? If you had lost your wallet? If. The had after you, if you had lost your wallet. Okay, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Good. Remember, Henry. Henry, what would you have done if you had a week vacation? Had a week vacation? In past, yeah. Yes, in past. What would you have? What would you have gone if you drive a new car? Ah, uh, Francisco. Remember, no what? Where you're looking for the for the place? Where would you have gone if you drove a new car? In the uh so if we want, if we want to make the the structure in, in future, we can say what would have you done if you will have. No, no. This okay. Here's the structure for the questions. Okay. For the questions here, one more time. Is what, for example, the Francisco put where? Okay. So I used the last one. Francisco said, "Where would you? Where would you have gone?" Remember is have and the verb in past part. So where would you have gone if you, and then we need the complement if in the past is if you had a new car or if you had bought a new car. But you have to put always have. Uh, not always here. Here, we're going to use have in the past participle. Okay. So, for example, not always is had. It depends the complement. Maybe I can say, hey, what would you have bought at a consumer? That's it. No, no, more, no more had because it depends on the complement. But if I have two actions, then yes, I need to put the other one with the past. Okay, let's take a look. What else you have? Ooh, you have fun if you drove a new car. Correct. Only the draw, right, Francisco? But yes, the you drove. Uh, <laughs> no problem. Have... What? Okay. At lunch, if your favorite restaurant was closed, ever remember was closed. What would you have done at lunch if your favorite restaurant I, was closed? I have one, but I'm not sure. Okay. What would you have done if you fly to Europe or flow? If you flew, if you flew to mm -hmm. Europe. Okay, let's practice a little bit. That way, I think with more practice with our partners, now we have some questions we can try and do. What would you have cooked? Okay, if you invited your friends, exactly. Okay, good. So let's try a few more and then I'll explain a little bit later. Okay, so one more time, let's go with our partners and see if we can get these ideas.
Are you ready to give opinions and suggestions about actions in the past? Join us and learn how to do it. Past modals. Use would have or should have plus past participle to give opinions or suggestions about actions in the past. What should I have done? You should have told them about it. You shouldn't have hidden it. What would you have done? I would have called him. I wouldn't have sent him an email. When and how do we use past models? We use past models to give opinions and suggestions about actions that already happened. To give opinions, we use would have plus past participle. And to give suggestions, we use should have plus past participle. But in both cases, our opinion or suggestion is too late. Remember for statements, we must use subject plus would have or should have plus past participle plus the rest of the sentence. For questions, we add WH question word plus would or should plus subject plus have plus past participle and the question mark. Let's read these situations. It is your task to come up with suggestions. Remember, you may use would or wouldn't have or should or shouldn't have. Type your answers in our discussion box. Number one. Your teacher borrowed your favorite book and spilled coffee all over it. Number two. You saw a classmate cheating on an exam. Are you ready to give opinions and suggestions about actions in the past? Join us and learn how to do it. Past modals. Use would have or should have plus past participle to give opinions or suggestions about actions in the past. What should I have done? You should have told them about it. You shouldn't have hidden it. What would you have done? I would have called him. I wouldn't have sent him an email. When and how do we use past models? We use past models to give opinions and suggestions about actions that already happened. To give opinions, we use would have plus past participle. And to give suggestions, we use should have plus past participle. But in both cases, our opinion or suggestion is too late. Remember for statements, we must use subject plus would have or should have plus past participle plus the rest of the sentence. For questions, we add WH question word plus would or should plus subject, plus have, plus past participle, and the question mark. Let's read these situations. It is your task to come up with suggestions. Remember, you may use would or wouldn't have, or should or shouldn't have. Type your answers in our discussion box. Number one. Your teacher borrowed your favorite book and spilled coffee all over it. Number two, you saw a classmate cheating on an exam.
Okay. How do you feel? A little bit better? No. Better. Okay. Uh, better. Don't worry. We need to practice more. And we're going to practice more. We're going to practice again tomorrow. And we're going to make sure that it's clear what is the difference so that you don't yes. get confused between the conditionals yes. or the third conditional, things like this. Okay? Yes. Okay. Remember, Thank you, teacher. Yes. working in the platform, work in the platform. We are almost, this weekend is the exam. This weekend, yes. we're going to have the exam. So work in the platform, okay? Okay. All right, guys, have a great night. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.